So in general, proving that a sequence converges is not an easy task. We have this definition of convergence that has these four different clauses that we need to satisfy, and it may not always be practical for us as authors of a proof to be able to come up with a capital N that makes the rest of the definition true for any epsilon that the universe chooses for us that's positive, right? So using the definition of convergence directly is something we don't always want to do. And the monotone convergence theorem is one of the most powerful tools that we can use to demonstrate that some sequences converge without having to directly appeal to the definition of convergence. What it states is that any sequence which is monotonic, in other words, it's always either increasing or decreasing for the whole length of the sequence and it never changes its mind. Any sequence which is monotonic and which is also bounded, and the boundedness that we need is bounded from above for an increasing sequence or bounded from below for a decreasing sequence. Any sequence which satisfies those two much more easily verified and understandable conditions will automatically converge. Not only that, it will converge to its least upper bound, its supremum, in the case of an increasing sequence, or its greatest lower bound, its infimum, in the case of a decreasing sequence. So let's look at an example of how in our full flourish to be able to prove that a certain sequence converges using the monotone convergence theorem. The sequence we're going to look at is the sequence which is defined recursively. In other words, we define it by first saying what its first term is, so its first term is the number one, and then telling how to produce each of its successive terms from the previous term. So this is saying that every term is produced from the previous by taking and adding one and then taking a radical, taking a square root. So in other words, the terms of this sequence would ultimately look like the square root of 1 plus the square root of 1 plus the square root of 1 plus the square root of dot, 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 dot. And that sequence, we want to use the monotone convergence theorem to prove that it converges. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to have to verify both conditions for the monotone convergence theorem hold for this recursively defined sequence. So we need to first prove that the sequence is monotonic. Then we need to prove that the sequence is bounded. And if we can do those two things, then the monotone convergence theorem will guarantee that this sequence converges. Just to add some icing to the cake, we can also then use some nice calculus and algebra to figure out what the actual limit of the sequence is. What does it converge to? But first things first, we have to establish the monotonicity and the boundedness for this sequence. So monotonic is difficult if we don't know which direction we think the sequence is going. So let's just look at the first few terms to get a sense. The first term is 1. The second term is the square root of 1 plus 1, the square root of 2. The next term after that is the square root of 1 plus the previous term, so the square root of 1 plus radical 2. The term after that is the square root of 1 plus the previous term, and so on and so on. And just in case it's not apparent from the first two terms, 1 square root of 2, the second being larger than the first, Let's also look at some decimal expansions of these, just to convince ourselves that, in fact, what we're seeing in the first four terms of the sequence is an increasing pattern. And so from that, it's reasonable to make a conjecture that maybe this is, in fact, a strictly increasing sequence. In other words, maybe it's true that for all natural numbers n, the n plus first term of the sequence is strictly greater than the nth term of the sequence. Let's try to prove that conjecture. And like with a lot of proofs that are quantified on all the natural numbers, we're going to use proof by mathematical induction in order to do it. Our base case will be the case n equals 1. And in the n equals 1 case, this proposition right down here turns into the statement that s2 is greater than s1. Well, is that true? s2 is the square root of 2. s1 is 1. And yes, in fact, the square root of 2 is greater than 1. I think we can take that for granted. So the base case is established. Next for our induction, we make the inductive hypothesis. The inductive hypothesis asserts that this statement is in fact true for a given value of n, an arbitrary value of n. So we're going to assume that the n plus first term is greater than the nth term. And then what we must prove at the induction step is that the statement is also true when n is replaced by n plus 1. In other words, if I know that the n plus first term is greater than the nth term, can I prove that the n plus 1 plus 1, or the n plus second term, is greater than the n plus first term? So this, this is the inequality that we now need to prove. So what is Sn plus 2? Well, according to the definition of our sequence, Sn plus 2 is equal to the square root of 1 plus Sn plus 1. So we're using the recursive definition of our sequence just with n plus 1 in the place of n. So Sn plus 2 is the square root of 1 plus Sn plus 1. 
But now, what do we know about Sn plus 1? We've made an inductive hypothesis in which we assume that the n plus first term is greater than the nth term. And if the n plus first term is greater than the nth term, then 1 plus that term is greater than 1 plus the nth term. And the square root of 1 plus the n plus first term will be greater than the square root of 1 plus the nth term. So there's where we explicitly use our inductive hypothesis. And that's how we know that this is actually a proof by induction, necessarily. But what is the square root of 1 plus Sn? Again, referring back to the recursive definition of our sequence, the square root of 1 plus Sn is exactly the n plus first term. And that establishes the proof that, in fact, not only Sn is a monotonic sequence, but that our conjecture that Sn is a strictly increasing sequence is, in fact, true. So we now know that we have a monotonic sequence. Next, we need to show that this is a bounded sequence. And to do that, we need to come up with at least some idea of what an upper bound, and again, we're going to want an upper bound here because we have an increasing sequence. What might an upper bound for the sequence be? Well, looking at the first few terms, 1, 1 1.4, 1.5, 1.6, all these terms seem like they're less than about 2. So let's make the conjecture that Sn is bounded above by 2 and see if we can prove it. Again, the form of this proof, because it's going to be a proof that's quantified on all natural numbers, if we rewrite this in its logical content, it's the statement that for all natural numbers n, the absolute value of Sn is less than or equal to 2. We could even do away with the absolute value because our conjecture says bounded above. Because it's quantified on the natural numbers, the proof of this assertion will proceed again by induction, with the base case being n equals 1. And in n equals 1, is it true that the absolute value of S1 is less than or equal to 2? Well, sure, because the absolute value of the first term is equal to 1, which is less than or equal to 2. So the base case is established. Next, we make our inductive hypothesis, namely that our assertion right here is true for a specific value of n. So the absolute value of Sn is less than or equal to 2. We're going to assume that that's true. And in our inductive step, we need to prove that it's also then true for the n plus first term. So why does it follow from the fact that the nth term is bounded above by 2 that the n plus first term is bounded above by 2? To prove this inequality, we'll start from the left-hand side. The absolute value of Sn plus 1 happens to be equal to Sn plus 1 because all of the terms in my sequence happen to be non-negative. But then, according to our in, uh, recursive definition of the sequence, Sn plus 1 is the square root of 1 plus Sn. That's how we define the sequence in the first place. But now we've said something about Sn that our inductive hypothesis can give us a clue about. Because according to our inductive hypothesis, Sn is going to be less than or equal to 2. And therefore, this quantity, the square root of 1 plus Sn, will be less than or equal to the square root of 1 plus 2, which is the square root of 3. And the square root of 3 is less than 2 because it's less than the square root of 4. And therefore, we've proven that the n plus first term of the sequence is less than or equal to 2. And that completes our proof by mathematical induction. So great. We now know that Sn is a monotonic sequence. In particular, it's strictly increasing. We also know that it's a bounded sequence. In particular, 2 is an upper bound for the entire sequence. And therefore, the monotone convergence theorem tells us, guarantees for us, that Sn is a convergent sequence. So we've now proven that Sn converges without having to use funny epsilons and n's. Right? What we haven't found out, and this is the icing on the cake, is what does this sequence actually converge to? And now that we know that it converges, we can find that answer out. And this is a manipulation that may look similar to one that you may have done in a Calc 1 class long ago. If we assume that this sequence's limit is denoted by capital L, so we just define capital L to be the limit of our sequence. Then using this recursion relationship, which defines my recursive sequence, Sn plus 1 equals 1 plus Sn, and taking the limit as n tends to infinity on both sides of that equation, I'm going to stick an n goes to infinity limit on both sides. Now on the right-hand side, uh, as we know, we can slip a limit past a square root. We can slip a limit through the arithmetic 1 plus so that that limit hits the Sn and turns the right-hand side into just the square root of 1 plus L. But what's the left-hand side? The limit of the n plus first term of the sequence as n tends to infinity. Well, as n tends to infinity, the n plus first term of the sequence is going to go to the same place that the nth term goes. We're just sort of renumbering the sequence by n plus 1 instead of by n. So this is the same as the limit as n minus 1 tends to infinity of Sn. But n minus 1 tends to infinity exactly when n tends to infinity. And so this left-hand side gives me the same value, l. 
And so taking the limit on both sides of our recursion relationship gives us an algebraic equation which hopefully defines the value of L, the limit, for us. And now we just have to do some algebra to discover what the value of L is. Squaring both sides, collecting all the terms to the left, we find out that L satisfies the quadratic equation, L squared minus L minus 1 is equal to 0. And then we can hit that with the quadratic formula to discover the value for L. 1 plus or minus the square root of 5 all over 2. And then making the observation that all of the terms in my sequence were non-negative. In fact, they were all positive. All my terms were positive, And therefore, the limit of the sequence, according to the monotonicity of limits, the limit of my sequence needs to be greater than or equal to 0. And only one of the two solutions to this quadratic equation is greater than or equal to 0, namely the one where we choose the plus sign. And so the limit of my sequence is the value 1 plus the square root of 5 all divided by 2, sometimes known as gamma. Uh, in, in the world of, uh, it's the golden ratio. And if you like it in a decimal, it's approximately 1.618, which again comports roughly with the decimal approximations that we had for the first two terms. So this example illustrates the power of the monotone convergence theorem to prove that a sequence whose definition is so clunky that we would have had a real tough time proving that this sequence converges directly using the epsilon and n definition. Instead, to prove that it converges, we verified that it met the two criteria of the monotone convergence theorem, namely that the sequence was monotonic. In fact, we proved it was a strictly increasing sequence. We had to use an induction argument to really get an airtight proof there. And we also proved that it was bounded from above by the number 2, again, using an induction argument to establish that that was the case. If all we cared about was whether the sequence converges, we would be done at that point by the monotone convergence theorem. But we can also go one step further and use some algebra to determine what the actual limit of this sequence is just by taking the limit of both sides of this recursion relationship and solving that equation.